Um, so yeah, I'm Stephen Holmes from Potato. Um, I'm a developer. Um, today, I'm going to tell you a story about scaling, and um, it's a story about how our company grew from one developer to a team of 70 across four continents in a little over two years. Um, and at the heart of that rapid growth, there are two really important ingredients, Django and Google App Engine. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, so before we crack on really quickly, just um, a bit of info, info on Potato for those who don't know. Um, we're an independent web development company. Um, we build a lot of stuff for Google, some for PayPal, um, and some other tech companies and agencies as well. Um, we're based in London, uh, but we've got offices around the world. Um, pretty much all of what we build is Django. Okay, so what am I going to be talking about today? Uh, there are two parts of this talk. Part one, running Django and App Engine. Um, I'll talk about three ways we do that, and then discuss some of the pros and cons of each. And then in part two, I'll talk about how it's helped scale our organization and culture. Okay, so I thought a good place to start would be to give some context on what I mean by scalability. As I'm sure you all know, uh, if you're building an application, uh, you should care about load scalability. So uh, how does your system expand and contract uh, based on traffic? Uh, you should probably also care about functional scalability. So how do you add more stuff to your app with minimal effort? Uh, and these are obviously technical in nature, so they affect how you architect it, uh, how you write your code, where you deploy it, and, and what type of hardware you choose. In addition, if you're building a, an organization, uh, a startup, or even a team, you should probably care about some other kinds of scalability as well. Um, organizational, so how do you take what you're doing on a sort of practical day-to-day -day level and do more of it? Uh, how do you hire more people? How do you hire better people? Um, and geographic, how do you do all of these things uh, in multiple locations? Um, so by making mistakes and like bucket loads of uh, blood, sweat and tears, we've, we've kind of come across all of these. Um, so that's what I mean by scalability. So with the context set, um, part one, running Django on App Engine. Uh, the main reason I wanted to do this talk is because if you search for this stack, uh, it's not really clear uh, what works, whether you should be using it, like, is App Engine a joke? Is it real? Do people use it? So it's easy to get confused. Um, but over the last two or three years, we've tried and tested loads of different ways um, of running this. And we've launched well over 100 apps using this stack. Um, just before we move on, out of interest, quick straw poll. Uh, Who's used App Engine before? Like to played with it or whatever? Who's used it in production? And who's used it with Django? Okay. Um, okay, so before uh, giving uh, the pros and cons of, of ways of running this, it's probably worth giving some context on why we like App Engine uh, and think it's a good fit with, with Django. Um, so, number one, auto scaling. Uh, like this is this is massive for us because we, we build a lot of kind of high profile stuff that needs to scale. Um, and as an example of of something we built, uh, we we built something for Valentine's Day, um, and it got a kind of it got a, an unexpected uh, promotion on the Google homepage. Um, and according to Alexa, it was like in the top ten sites visited on the entire interwebs of that day. Um, so like many thousands of requests a second. Um, and without touching it, without, without doing anything to the code, um, it just soaked it all up. Um, and I think it was running on a few hundred instances around the world. Um, and then the next day, uh, you know, Valentine's Day was over and no one loved each other anymore. So uh, it just scaled itself back down and basically became redundant. Um, and in that 24 hours, or, or a little over that, you know, it sustained kind of thousands of requests a second. Uh, but cost less than a ticket to DjangoCon um, in, in charges, I think. Maybe about the same. Um, so App Engines, they've got this nailed. It, it, does, it does scale. Um, and I'll revisit this later. Number two, services and APIs that are built in. Um, there's loads of these, and they, they're all just hooks that you can, you can use in your app. And again, I'll revisit this in part two. And finally, uh, Gnosis Admin. So just write good code, um, just make good things. And again, more on that in part two. 
So in the interest of balance, um, some caveats to point out with App Engine. Uh, it is a sandbox, so other than a Python shell, you've got limited access to, to, the, to the infrastructure. Um, so you can't run pip install on there, for example. Um, so you've got to install your packages locally and push when you deploy. Um, and things like that, if you're a kind of purist, then that might feel odd at first. Um, yeah, no file system in the traditional sense, um, but there is a blob store and a file-like API, so sometimes you've got to work around that. Um, and yeah, portability, so this is kind of a big one. Um, a lot of people get scared about like the lock-in thing, um, and that's a totally valid point. Um, but there are options which I'll, which I'll talk about. Um, so, you know, as with any, any choice, uh, there are trade-offs. Um, but to paraphrase, I think it was Christoph who said, uh, don't limit yourself because of a hypothetical need. Like, is there a valid workaround? And we found that in pretty much all cases, the answer is yes. And then in many of those cases, it's actually led us to build a more robust application as a result of that. Um, so with App Engine covered at a high level, uh, I'll run over the three different ways uh, you can do this. Uh, starting with Django Nonrel, this is a fairly known, well-known way. Um, it's been mentioned at DjangoCon before. Um, and if you don't know what it is, it's basically a, a, a ported version of Django that's got all the stuff that's um, relational ripped out. Uh, so you can run it on a relational database, and that includes Mongo. Um, and then there's a, a suite of, of tools for running on App Engine specifically. Um, and in this case, the default database is App Engine's uh, NoSQL data store, but you don't have to use that. Um, the project's now open source, uh, it's on GitHub and fairly actively maintained by a dedicated community, um, and Potato contribute to this quite a lot. Um, so what's good about this? Why would, you, why would you want to use it? Well, it looks like Django, so it, it works in exactly, well, not exactly the same way, but if you know Django, you're in a familiar place. Um, so there's a shallow learning curve. Um, you, d you don't have to relearn too much. Um, code becomes more reusable, so because you've got the, the Django abstraction in, uh, you know you're not using App Engine's uh, data store models directly. So you can swap out the database for something else if you want, um, or move to an entirely different platform, and that does make life a bit easier. Um, and we've had apps where we've swapped out um, uh, the data store for Cloud SQL, and it's been pretty straightforward. Um, and thirdly, it is reliable in production. Um, we do deploy a lot of, a lot of apps with this. Um, how do you run it? Just really easy. Just download the SDK uh, and clone the repository, and it's all self-contained and, and just runs. Uh, there's a demo project, and you can just get coding with that within a few minutes. Uh, so what's not so good about this? You probably can't see the bottom if you're at the back, but um, the familiarity can be misleading. So it looks and feels like Django, but it uh, normal Django, but um, you might instinctively do something that isn't supported, like use a many-to-many. -many. Um, so you, you've got to learn the differences between normal Django and, and non-relational Django. Um, but that's fun, right? Um, and yeah, finally, so because, of, because it is like a forked version of Django, uh, it can feel like hacky and um, people don't like that. Uh, but it'd be great to see this in, in core one day. Wink, wink. Um, uh, but, but on the whole, we, we really like this, um, and we've used it successfully in production a lot. Uh, just an example of something we built uh, using this uh, Google Art project. Um, some pretty epic numbers involved there, and non rails at the core of that. Uh, moving on, the second way is this thing we call Jap Engine. Um, and what this is, it, it basically just uses the, the version of Django that ships with App Engine. So that's normally just the latest version, but you can specify any previous version in a YAML file. Um, but in this one, you kind of forfeit the, you forfeit the Django RM and you use um, App Engine's models directly, uh, which are, are similar but different. Um, and so this is kind of a, a little skeleton project that we've put together. Um, it's on GitHub, and again, we, we maintain this because we use it. Um, so, what's good about this? Why would you want to use it? It aims to be a best of both worlds approach. So, you use all the forms and views and all the other awesome stuff in Django, uh, and then you just leverage the, the App Engine uh, data store directly. 
Um, so what this does mean is you can use NDB. Um, and if you don't use App Engine, you probably don't know what NDB is, but um, it's the next generation data store API um, that they've built with scalability in mind. Um, so it supports automatic caching, um, and you can do kind of sophisticated structured queries um, and do things like ancestor queries. So it's really well suited for, for you know, storing data and getting it back fast. Um, again, how do you run it? It's all self-contained, so once you've got the SDK and, and clone this repository, um, it'll just work and you can, you can code straight away. I use this a lot for uh, prototyping, just because it's so easy to, to run it. Um, but then we can use it in production as well, so the code's kind of reusable. Um, what's not so good about this, uh, obviously it's not pure Django, so uh, there's a bit of a learning curve. You've got to learn uh, a new database API. Um, and as a result of that, you know, you kind of forfeit some of the, the portability that you would get with um, Django non-rel, for example. Um, but again, you know, this works really well for us. Um, something we've built using this, uh, Google Elections, so uh, tracking different trend me metrics around the US election campaign. Um, again, fairly high profile, so just needed to scale up. Um, okay, the final, the final way, the third way uh, that we that we deploy on App Engine is um, Django, App Engine, and Cloud SQL. Um, and I'll keep this one a bit shorter because uh, the docs are really up, uh, up to date and good on this. Um, so this is kind of you know Google's kind of offering of, of Django. So uh, they've they've built a wrapper around their Cloud SQL um, for my, uh, Django's MySQL backend, um, and it it just works. Uh, all functionality is supported. Um, so you can remove all the hacks, yay! Um, and you know you, you're back to a, a relational database, so you can start. You know you can run unpredictable reports again, um, which is harder to do on a non-relational database. And you can start to do interesting things like um, like hybridize. So you know try and use uh, multiple database functionality. Um, use the data store for serving things quickly, kind of documents. Um, and then use SQL for, for when you need to run reports or, or things like that. Um, how, do you, how do you run it? Uh, just follow the docs, it's really easy. You just set up a, a Cloud SQL instance and uh, yeah, pretty much just works. Um, so other than a bit more setup, uh, it's, you know, you're good to go. Um, example of something we've built using this, uh, get in business online. This is kind of a massive like global campaign that we've had to scale horizontally in loads and loads of different markets. Um, I think there are like 90 versions of this uh, uh, live at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's, a, that's another good option. Actually, I've just thought of a fourth way uh, that, we, that we kind of use this stack. Um, and we have App Engine uh, talking to a, a Compute Engine instance, which does like the difficult stuff that you can't do on App Engine. Um, if you don't know, uh, Compute Engine's Google's new uh, Linux virtual machine thingy, Bob, um, and it's out of. I think it's in preview, but you can you can uh, sign up and use that now. Okay, so I've uh, explained some of the ways we run uh, Django and App Engine, and the one we pick out of these is is purely down to the specifics of the app we're building. Um, but if you are looking to give it a go, which I suggest you do. Um, any one of these is a good place to start. Okay, um, so now that's kind of the end of part one, and I'm going to move on to talk about how this has helped scale our organization and culture. Um, and now that we've moved on to a serious business talk, um, there's a picture of the guys from our Bristol office uh, during a dress up Friday. I should point that is parody, not not how we actually work. Uh, so don't let that put you off coming to work with us. Um, so to bring this back home then, uh, like let's recap on our, our diagram from, from the intro. Taking each one in turn, load. I said that um, App Engine auto scales, which is true, but it's not really the complete story. Uh, it's kind of a deal you make. So you've got to write your application properly in the first place and App Engine will reciprocate and scale for you. Um, but you've obviously got to do some work to make sure that's going to happen. 
So what are some, some of the things you should be doing? Um, the usual stuff, uh, which I'm sure you're aware of, but planning, you know, that's number one. You know, how are you modeling your data? Are you thinking about what's going to happen if a gazillion people just decide to, to visit your app? Um, can it handle it? Caching, you know, cache the living hell out of everything if you can. Do stuff offline, so move your stuff out of the request and put it into task queues. Um, what can wait? You know, asynchronous, sort of uh, eventual consistency, uh, a lot of the time is good enough, so you know, you can use that. And finally, preparation. Um, so running some realistic load tests before you launch. Uh, kind of, you know, it goes without saying, but have you found out how many people are going to visit your app and have you tested that in theory? Um, and then doing some profiling, you know, we've had some good talks about this, um, but App Engine's got a thing built in called App Stats, which um, shows you all your database hits and memcache hits and then uh, shows you the actual cost in, in dollars for that. So it's really good for, for tweaking your app before you launch and finding out. Um, if it's going to cost you all the monies, or die, or both. Uh, so, but if you do all of these, um, it will auto-scale for you. So, back to our diagram, um, what about functional scaling? How do you add stuff to your app with minimal effort? Well, number one, Django, right? So, we know that, that's why we're here. Um, Django is good for, for this, that's why we use it. It's, you know, documentation, standard ways of doing things, all the stuff that Danny covered in, in his talk, um, the, you know, awesome community. These are all there to help you add stuff to your app quickly and, and efficiently and in the right way. Okay, so with that said, what happens if you add App Engine into the mix? Um, I mentioned one of the main reasons we use it is that uh, there's a shed load of stuff baked in, uh, in terms of services and APIs that you can just use. Um, you know, I won't be able to go over the whole list, but there's memcache, task queues, uh, map reduce, full text search, there's email, there's stuff for OAuth and user hooks. You can build endpoints for APIs, um, the sockets, and the stuff for, for working with images. Um, so you can do on the fly image manipulation. And it's all served off the same infrastructure as uh, Picasa and Google Plus. So really good if you've got um, a site with a load of images. Um, secondly, versioning. So with App Engine, every app can have uh, 10 versions deployed at the same time, uh, each with its own URL. And this kind of just kind of blew my mind in a way when I, when I started using it. But it's so simple. But you, uh, it, it means that you can deploy against the live environment and just test it before you set it to default. So um, you know, it's great for UAT or just testing a branch um, and just seeing what happens. And then when you're happy, you just click a button and make it default and it's live. Um, and then it's got stuff built in for A-B testing and traffic splitting as well. Uh, so you can just give it a percentage of traffic to direct to another version and you're good to go. And then finally, the SDK. So uh, once you've installed that locally, you've got an environment that is pretty much exactly the same as the production environment, give or take. Um, it aims to be the same. But so what you build, uh, you're pretty confident that when you deploy it, it's, it's going to work. So all of these are, are extremely powerful tools for building and testing apps. Um, so they're all things that help you scale functionally. OK, uh, back to our diagram again. What about the non-technical stuff now? How has this helped us grow uh, as an organization? So it's kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of a cultural thing, but you know, be a minimalist. What bottlenecks and overhead is getting in the way of you building cool things? Just remove it. You know, everyone should be able to build and deploy apps. So if the front end guy wants to, wants to deploy something, he shouldn't have to wait for the back end guy to do it. Um, you know, there's no configuration or messing around with servers. There's probably no cost um, for small apps. You know, if you want to build kind of little things, it's basically free. Um, so as developers, we're, we're kind of empowered to go out and, and just make good things. Um, and one example of this, uh, one of the key pieces in our, in our kind of organization is um, 
our suite of, we've got internal apps. Uh, so we've got apps that track deployments. Uh, that's called Spodgun. And that's kind of nicely integrated with our tickets and repository system. Uh, we've got a wiki. Uh, yeah, I realized I had to blur all of that out because uh, it had stuff in there. So that's a completely pointless screenshot. Um, but, but this is really important uh, to us. So there are pages on everything. Um, we've got project notes, like coding best practices, just social, funny, pointless stuff, jokes about people's mums. Um, about 15 different ways of installing Pill on a Mac. Uh, none of them ever work. But the point is that everything's kind of shared and collaborative, and, and the idea is that like, the company runs itself. People get passionate about a certain thing, make a wiki page on it, and then that becomes kind of the place you go to find out about that thing. Um, we've also got apps for like, resource allocation, a checklist that bug you to do stuff before you're about to launch an app. Um, I've got an employee directory. We've got mission critical stuff like uh, something that tracks the pool and dart scores, um, built by Pablo. Um, and we've got an app that tracks our recruitment process. And most, if not all, of these have just come out of um, one or two developers just seeing a problem and then going away and coding something up in an afternoon. And, and if it gets traction, uh, it can kind of subtly or even profoundly change the way we work as a company. So using the recruitment app uh, as an example, uh, that's called Cooker, because uh, everything has to have a silly potato name. Um, we were getting loads of job applications, and it was impossible to track what was going on, like who'd interviewed who, who'd replied. It was all done on email really badly. And so eventually, we were just missing chances to hire really good, talented developers. Um, and then one of our founders, Jason, went out and um, built a Django app, deployed it on App Engine. It uses the email API to kind of just suck in all the applications and get out the CVs. Um, and it really works. It helps organizers. Um, so something built and deployed from a beach in Thailand uh, allowed us to hire better people faster. Um, and we've just got rid of all the overhead that came with that. So. Um, since it was uh, deployed, I think we've, we've managed over 5,000 just with this little, little app that was built in, a, in an afternoon. And now we can hire really good people quickly, which is key to scaling a, an organization. So the beauty of this is that it's, it's all integrated. Um, one account logs you into everything. It's all on our Google, Google Apps domain, so it's all centralized. Um, and it's really trivial to have it running over HTTPS, so uh, we can just put all our confidential shit in there and it's fine. Um, okay, so back to the diagram one final time. Uh, hopefully by now it's kind of clear how it's possible to replicate this across multiple locations. So, you know, it's all about removing bottlenecks and overhead and making everything accessible from wherever people are. Um, and, you know, allowing people to just go away and, and build something and deploy it from, from any location. Um, so you've got something that, that scales pretty well. Um, and it's just, yeah, just about stripping everything away uh, that gets in the way of just making good things. Um, and yeah, and when I say we, we deploy from, from any location, we've had people deploy from a beach, as I mentioned, um, trains, planes, they've got Wi-Fi in the States now, uh, a motorway. I don't think he was driving, but I hope he wasn't. Um, parks and the pub. Um, and I've found two pints to be optimal uh, for all deployments. Three if it's a major milestone, I guess. Um, well, on that note, uh, it's rapidly approaching beers o'clock. Um, so I'll wrap up. In a nutshell, that's just how we scaled as, a, as an organization, technically and non-technically, in a really short amount of time. And the kind of key influence that that the choice to use Django and App Engine has had on that. Thanks for listening. Uh, I'll be around for questions.